In this presentation, I'm going to go over the Professional Portfolio Rough Drafts number two, which is about the artifacts section. So, so far you have written the your introduction in your professional portfolio, and you have written your executive summary for your professional portfolio. So during this week, your professor will read your first draft and give you feedback. You are expected to read the feedback and make changes to your, uh, usually your introduction doesn't get has to be changed, maybe uh, little minor things, but usually it's your executive summary. If there's things that your professor wants you to make changes to, please make those changes. You are expected to read the feedback and make the changes. So how will we give you feedback? One way is by inserting a comment like this. Great, great work. So something like this. It'll give you feedback in the comments section. Now to see that uh, feedback, you need to be in either the, uh, have the markup checked here so you can actually see the feedback. Now for using, um, oh, what's that called? A iPad, you're not gonna be able to see the feedback from your faculty, so make sure that uh, you're using a Microsoft Word document. Okay, so that's how you get feedback, or they'll write in red, uh, or they'll put comments at the end of your paper. So you have to look for your faculty's feedback, and also they may give you feedback within Moodle. Uh, so it is your responsibility to make changes to your rough draft this week from, uh, so you're gonna turn in both the executive summary, your introduction, your executive summary, and <coughs> excuse me, and your artifact section. So I'm going to pull up the athletic training uh, example. Now, what is an artifact? An artifact is just proof that you're actually doing the um, standard at your job. So let's let's review. Sorry. Sorry, I don't want to make you guys sick. Uh, what are our standards for this, for our first portfolio? So for our first portfolio, the PE teachers is pretty straightforward. You're going to turn in a lesson plan. Your lesson plan should address shape standard one and your specific uh, grade level outcome for whatever grade level that you teach. So in your lesson plan, you should make sure that you put in the national standards uh, for shape standard one and the grade level standards from shape and if your district or your state level has specific standards make sure those are included in your lesson plan so the lesson plan is your artifact the artifact goes into an appendix it does not go into the main part of your um, portfolio for coaches uh, you have set visions, goals, and standards for sport program. Uh, what I would expect, what we would expect for a artifact for this core responsibility is a coaching philosophy statement. Uh, if you don't know how to write a coaching philosophy statement, uh, search the internet for it. Uh, you will eventually write one in a class that you're taking you will take in this program it's called history and philosophy and kinesiology but if you have not written a coaching philosophy statement uh, read these standards search the internet on how to write a coaching philosophy statement the coaching philosophy statement should be addressed uh, should be placed in the appendix for the strength and condition coach <clears throat> what form which way do you actually do a pre-participation screening and clearance for your uh, clients? Maybe you're not, if you're working at a college or a high school, maybe it's done by the uh, uh, athletic training staff or the it's required for them to 
be a uh, student athlete at the college or the uh, school. So what does the school require for this? Do you specifically have some kind of pre-participation screening and clearance that you use or your institution uses or where your work uses? So that form, it doesn't have to be completed by somebody, that form should be included in the, the appendix. <clears throat> Now, you only, for coaches, I forgot to say this, you only need one artifact for the core responsibilities, okay? When we get into later uh, portfolios, you'll see in the second uh, portfolio for both coaches and strength and conditioning coaches, you're going to be doing, uh, for coaches, you're going to do two core responsibilities. So, but you still, you need one artifact for uh, the engage, engage in sport, engage in and support ethical practices. You need one artifact for that. And build relationships, you need one artifact for that. For strength and conditioning, you need one artifact for standard two and one artifact for standard three. You do not need an artifact for each one of these specific standards within the core responsibilities for the coaches. All right. Sometimes we get some, sometimes. Uh, students aren't clear about that. So let's go back to our athletic training portfolio. I'm not going to read this. I expect you to read this on your own. Okay. Because, uh, again, this will uh, provide you an understanding <coughs> of how to write um, this particular section. So in this section here, this is going to be two to three pages in length. So what you're going to do is you're going to describe what first i probably have maybe a paragraph on what is the artifact where is that artifact located in the document so you see right here appendix a so that's telling the reader where that artifact is um, and then you want to explain why that lesson plan uh, that pre-participation physical exam uh, document and or your coaching philosophy demonstrates that you are meeting the PE standard, the strength and conditioning standard, or the coach's core responsibilities. Um, you can bring in, this is where with the coaches and with the um, strength and conditioning coaches, you can bring in the st standards or the course, I forget what they call them in strength and conditioning right now, I'm just blanking on it. But the, the other areas within uh, the descriptions for each of these areas to demonstrate how you are satisfying the code or the standard or the core responsibility. Um, again, it's, don't assume that the reader knows anything about this material. You notice in this athletic training uh, description, the student here brings in other references, outside references to support what they have written. I assume that you should do this too, uh, because we believe that we should support what we write with um, references or with evidence. So that's what I want you to do when you're writing this. Again, so this section should be two to three pages of explaining why the artifact demonstrates that you are meeting that standard or that core responsibility at your workplace. If you're not sure if it does, have somebody who's not a coach, not a PE teacher, not a strength and conditioning coach read this section and the executive summary section, do they, can they understand what you're trying to communicate with, uh, with us? Does it demonstrate to somebody else that that artifact, that your coaching philosophy, actually satisfies the core responsibility in coaching? Does your lesson plan actually meet standard one and the objectives? for your grade level. How and why? Why does it meet it? Um, again, do not assume that we know anything when you're writing this section. Two to three pages on this section. 
If you have questions, please ask your professors about this.